Hey everybody, how are you? Um, I wanted to have a, a little talk with you today. There's a couple things that I have um, really been, I guess, kind of discerning, receiving, being taught by the Spirit, by the Father, and I want to share some of those things with you. Um, first of all, I want to ask you a question, and I want y'all to think about this. If the world were to create a God for us, what would that God be like? If the world today were to create a God for us, what would that God be like? I think that God would be a God that doesn't require anything of us. That says, you just follow your heart and try to be a good person and that's fine. I think it would be a God that would not hold us accountable for anything and that would certainly not set out any rules, regulations, or guidelines and require us to follow them in order to follow Him. Um, I think it would be a God who just was what I think of as a fluffy God. We make in our own image that tells us everything we do is great and that validates, confirms, and applauds anything that we want to do, any love, any, anything that we love, anything that we enjoy, it's just going to say, oh, that's fine with me. That's fine. You do that. You do that. And, and you're going to be a great person in my eyes. You just follow your own wisdom. Um, it's, I think it would be a God that would back up any wisdom. Any thoughts we have are good because there are thoughts and we're a good person. And that's what that God would be. And I think in many ways, that's the God that we all start out worshiping. And at some point when we start reading the Bible, we come to a point where we say, okay, am I going to acknowledge that the God I've created is not the God of creation? And we come to that point, we have to make that decision. We're either going to keep reading and we're going to acknowledge he is who he says he is, or we're going to stop, or maybe we're going to put blinders on, <laughs> you know. Um, either way, it's it's a pivotal point. And when we start reading the Bible, we come to a couple of these different points. Um, we come to a point where we realize, oh wow, this book doesn't say what everybody told me it said. <laughs> um, oh, God isn't who everybody told me he was he's telling me who he is and am I going to believe what they say about him or am I going to believe him and so for a lot of people coming to the point that we've come through um, going on the path that we these these miles that we've traveled together from Genesis to 1 Samuel have been difficult miles to travel and I respect that I respect that because I went down this road for the first time at one point and then I went down this road for the second time at one point and then the third time and the fourth time and the fifth time and every time he gives us a little more that we had to digest and we he brings us he draws us closer to him when we say hey you know some of this stuff is hard stuff this is going to require some changes um, I'm gonna to have to step out of my comfort zone father I'm following you Wherever you lead, I'm going to follow. And those are big decisions to make. Those are eternal decisions to make. And I respect that they're not easy decisions to make. So I want to encourage you, if you have stuck with us for this long, um, the spiritual maturity it takes to open the book and to read through and to face the hard things and to work them out with the Father. That's a lot. And I respect that. Stay with us because more and more is going to unfold um, as we read on through. I know a lot of people are waiting for the New Testament and they're like, oh, I can't wait till we get to the New Testament because this stuff's hard. You know, this stuff tells us we have to, this stuff tells us we have to obey him. This stuff tells us we have to follow him. This stuff tells us we have to do it his way. I can't wait to the New Testament. Oh yeah, wait till you get the New Testament. 
that's where it all really even comes together because that's people you're going to see that that is people walking this out living this out preaching this teaching this this is the foundation and you're going to see a whole new house and so stick around because it's going to be amazing that's actually not even what I wanted to talk about today. Um, what I wanted to talk about today was prayer and trust. I want to talk about trusting in the Father. When we pray, when we turn something over to Him, we need to be careful not to snatch it back. So we saw a really important lesson with Gideon. I think it was in Judges 7. I'm not sure I could be off on that. But Gideon was going to go out, and it was this big army. And they had he had 32,000 soldiers, and he was a little concerned, even at those numbers, that they wouldn't be able to do it. And the father's like, I'm going to win this for you. I'm going to win this battle. And Gideon's like, okay, we've got 32 soldiers. We're relying on the father to make this happen. And the father says, okay, you know, basically send 10,000 of them home. It's like, oh, okay. But, and the father says, because I want them to know who won this battle. I don't want anybody being able to boast that you won this battle. I'm winning this battle and everybody's going to know who won this battle. So they send, send 10,000 home. It's left with 22,000. And the father's like, still too many. Because I want people to know who won this battle. Sends more home. You'll have to read the whole passage. It's left with 300. 300. And the father's like, now you're going to know who won this battle. So when we start praying for things, we need to be careful. Because when you start praying for things, when you put things in the father's hand, if it is his will to bring that about, he is going to bring it about. And when you start seeing him move... The temptation will be to jump in and start kind of taking over. Okay, that's going to be the temptation. Can we not? That's the temptation. Don't do it. Don't snatch it back. Because when you say, Father, I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to trust in you. And then he starts moving. And then you pull it back. It's like, oh, okay. So you're going to do this now. <laughs> so you're going to do this? So you're going to get the credit for this. This is what you want to do. I mean, I was here about to pour a miracle for you, but you want to do this. You know, when the father, when we give the father the ball and he starts running with it, don't intercept. Don't. And you're going to see that in our reading today. Well, it may be tomorrow. I ain't decided when I'm going to post this yet. But in Daniel, you're going to see that in Daniel 22, 3. When Daniel takes his family to the king of Moab for safekeeping, he says, Please let my father and my mother stay with you till I know what God will do for me. He's not saying, so I can go off and fight Saul, so I can go do this. It says, till I know what God will do for me. And you see through his actions, he has the opportunity to kill Saul in that cave, but he doesn't. He's like, nope, God is going to handle this. The Father is handling this. I'm not going to do this. Now, of course, the Father calls us to move sometimes. I'm not saying don't move when he says move. But I don't think that's what most of our situations are. I don't think that's what is actually going on. In most of our situations, we tell the Father we're going to trust Him with something. We pray over something and we say we're putting it in His hands. And then when we see Him start to move, we're like, oop, and we pick it up and we run with it. No. Sit back. Sit back. Give Him all the glory. Let Him have all the glory. You sit back. You keep your nose in the book. You keep your eyes on him. He will handle it. If you're going to turn something over to him, turn it over to him. And then you only move when he tells you to move. Clear directives. Then you move. You don't start running in. Oh, the father is running with it. I'm going to get the ball and I'm going to take it to the end zone. No. When he starts doing that, you let him do it. Do not step in. Do not step in. I think we need to really think about that. We need to think about Gideon. He made sure that it was such a massive miracle that no one else could possibly claim credit for it. Don't step in. Because what you're doing a lot of the times, what we do, is we're taking credit away from the Father. We're like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. 
Remember, it's the same model of how we're saved. Are we saved by our works? No. We're saved by grace. We are saved by grace. Grace alone. That's all his doing. All his doing. Does that mean we can do whatever we want? Absolutely not. Does that mean that we don't have to obey him? No. And these are some hard things to face. And we're having to face them a lot right now. Because we've, the world tells us it's a fluffy God. <laughs> that you don't have to do anything. You just follow your own heart. It's a fluffy God. And a lot of times when we're faced with fluffy God or authentic God, the world's going to choose fluffy God. Boy, are we going to miss out. It is the, it is the mistake of eternity when we choose not to follow the authentic God because it might require something of us. So I just want to encourage you today. Put faith in Him. Put your life in His hands and leave it there. Don't take it back. Leave it there and see what He does with it. When you're following him and you're going uphill or you go across a rocky path, keep going because he's, he's strengthening you. He is strengthening you. There are amazing and mighty things ahead. For those who would follow the one true king, let's follow him. I love y'all. Be encouraged. You are here for a reason. You are here for a reason. Many will be called and few will be chosen. And you're here. And he's created in you a hunger for his word. He has built up that hunger within you that only he can satisfy. And he's here feeding you every single day from his hand. This is, there's no greater place to be than at his feet being fed by his hand through his word. I love y'all. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.